And yeah, I mean, it's a tale as old as time, really. You want to make something look like it's from the future? You throw a hex pattern on it. There's something about a six-sided shape that makes us think, wow, I am in the year 2100. There's a couple ways you can make this guy. The thing I see most people do, this will be a quick one, is they start from polygon and they plug this into a tile generator. And this is where things already go wrong because the nature of the hexagon shape here makes it very difficult to make this tile in a way that's scalable and intuitive. If we set this to image input, you can already tell it's kind of annoying. We need to offset these so that every row is offset like this. And you can see already the, the, the sort of problem here, right? Is that the gap vertically is much wider than the gap horizontally. So you can play with this and just change the scale and get this to a part where at least everything is even both width and height, but then you realize, you know, okay, they're just, they're now tall. I made a rupee from Zelda. Oops. Like they're taller than I would have liked. So you just say, okay, well, give me less of them or give me more of them width wise. And you're kind of there, right? You can scale this up and this works pretty good. It's okay. It's just really annoying to work with, right? For one thing, if I decide, you know, I want it to be, I need a little less of them. Now I break tiling, right? I'm just pressing space over top of the 2D viewport to preview what the tiling is going to look like. And you see that red border is the edge of my UV tile. And you can see that because I'm using an odd number in the Y amount, I actually, it can't resolve the tiling on either side. So it becomes really annoying to work with. If I want more of them, I have to put this up and then put this up a requisite amount and make sure I get it in the right spot. And now they're lit a little too short. It's just a headache. It's really, really annoying. If you want to try to expose these to make, you know, one slider to control how many you have, it's, you know, really, really hard to work out in a way that's consistent. I'm here. This is a very quick video, much quicker than the normal ones. I'm just here to show you a way you can do this much faster. So using what we know from using distance nodes, we use that in our flood fill tutorial up here. All you have to do is make these squares or pixels for that matter, just like we did in the flood fill video. They needn't be squares. They could just be single pixels. I'm just making them squares so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So we'll do the squares. We'll give them our random offset, just like we did with the, the hex tile generator up here. Give them some random luminance. And now all we have to do is get a distance, run that into our source. In our mask, we want an all white version of our randomly grayscaled dots. So I'll just set my history M scan to full. So if they're all white, again, you could use levels for that if you'd like. I mean, we just grow these and that's it. Hit only source. This is a lot more manageable. We don't have to worry about the size being incorrect or like the width being uneven in X versus Y. Cause we can just throw an edge detect on this. And this is really nice. There's your pattern, it's consistent. Same width in between. And if we want, all we have to do is change the X and Y amounts here. And we have a lot more freedom to make this work out for us. Much easier. We can do all the, the width on this separate node. And that's it, you can do whatever you want with this, bevel it to turn it into panels. Uh, Right, if you wanted to just bevel these fully closed, you could auto level these. Remember, whenever you bevel like this, you're typically setting this to full, right? So that you know it's fully closed. And then using an auto level. The reason why you're doing that, right? Just as a reminder, you'll see me say, you'll see me do that all the time, bevel things fully closed. The reason why I'm doing that is because some people just eyeball this. Like they go in and they bevel it till they're like, yeah, that feels good. Right, that's all I want. But then the issue becomes if downstream they decide to make this wider, all of a sudden it doesn't work anymore. Then you have to go back to the bevel, change it so that it does fully meet. And then, you know, someone comes, taps you on the shoulder, says, hey, those got to be a bit thinner. 
you make them a bit thinner. All of a sudden, this is too crazy. You have to go back, hand do this, right? It really sucks. What you can just do, and you'll hear me say this all the time, set the bevel to full. It's there. You guys can barely see this. I can barely see this. But there are values there. It's just that we've ensured by setting it to either one or not minus one, if we're beveling the other direction, that these are fully closed. The auto level is just bringing our range back. And now if we move the width on the edge detect, we're good. Right, we have a full, we, it will always stay fully closed, which is really nice. Anytime you don't have to just shovel the snow behind you and shovel it back, this is a nice thing. So you can just do this, plug this into your normal, your AO, your all your fun stuff. And then you have these kind of metal panels. We'll put this on like a sphere, two tiles or something. Go over here. We want these to be metal. Cool. And you just work up your texture from here and you have this kind of neat panel. Um, you could you could make this a bit more interesting too if you wanted some bigger hex tiles. We can get into that in maybe a different video. But you don't you need to be just normal panels like this. You could also use it as an emissive mask, classic. That's what I did in the thumbnail, guy from thumbnail. So you can make a new output if you want. Make him emissive. You could pick something like the classic green that cannot be captured if you're ever printing something in CMYK. You need RBJ to get this kind of teal color in my experience. And then you can invert this guy and then multiply him so we only get the glow and the cracks. Right click on that output, view in 3D view isn't the emissive channel. You got your glow. Pretty cool, and there's lots of stuff you can do to experiment with that. Let's just give you an idea. It's quick. It's not like the other ones where we go a little long. It's not interminable. Um, but I hope this helps, because I just think it finding it much faster and a lot more intuitive. Um, if you like the video, like the video. Um, and if you haven't subscribed, subscribe also. Uh, there's a lot more to come. Uh, I'm gonna be putting out you know, maybe two or three of these a week. And I will be putting out more and more the more people are around for it, the more people that are getting help from it. Put um, Another great thing would be if you post on ArtStation, I would love to see people make stuff with this kind of technique and then tag me in an ArtStation. It'd be great to see what people cook up. So I hope this helps and I'll see you guys soon.